We don't have a left party mm. in the United States. Mm. The Democratic Party is not a left party. Mm -hmm. That's Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez speaking the truth about the Democratic Party during an event to commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now this put the establishment in quite a tizzy and we'll explain why, but let's hear more of what she had to say. We don't have a left party mm. in the United States. Mm. The Democratic Party is not a left party. Mm -hmm. um, the Democratic Party is a center or center conservative party. Mm. We do not advocate for, we do not, we can't even get a floor vote on Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Not even a floor vote that gets voted down. Mm -hmm. We can't even get a vote on it. Mm -hmm. So this is not a left party. Mm -hmm. There are left members inside the Democratic Party mm -hmm. that are working to try to make that shift happen. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, it does convey a certain uh, sentiment about true believers. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there are a lot of true believers in that we can capitalism our way out of poverty mm -hmm. um, in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. If anything, that's probably the majority. Right. Um, and that's an area in which I agree with Dr. King mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that assessment is flawed. Mm -hmm. So AOC is absolutely right, and she had made similar comments recently while speaking to New York Magazine. She was quoted as saying, they let anybody who the cat dragged in call themselves a progressive. There's no standard, Democrats can be too big of a tent. And she's right because even in this election, you have people like Senator Amy Klobuchar referring to herself as progressive. When in reality, and she says this on the debate stage all the time, she's all about practicality. She wants to be practical. She doesn't want to uh, promise things that she's not really gonna fight for, right? So uh, she wants to be measured. She wants to temper the expectations of voters when in reality, it doesn't need to work that way. When you look at the polling and when you look at what Democratic constituents want, they want Medicare for all, they want to cancel student loan debt, and they want free college tuition at public institutions. These are not crazy ideas. The only reason why they appear to be crazy is because that's what we hear regurgitated over and over again by the corporate media and because Politicians uh, have these giant donors in their pockets, and, and they, they're the ones who keep regurgitating those points. It's not crazy when you look at the public polling and you see what the public wants. The Democratic Party, as it stands right now, doesn't really represent what Democratic voters want. That's simple. Well, I'm glad she finally said it. Uh, finally, yeah, we've been saying on this show for over a year, you know, they're not going to vote on Medicare for all. And the audience is, has when I first started saying it, like, no, I mean, what do you mean? They, they come in, they, at some point, you're gonna have a vote, aren't you? No, not in this term. And certainly, if Bernie doesn't win ever, they're not gonna have a vote on Medicare for all. So I asked progressive candidates, Warren, Sanders, etc. I asked other progressives, can you please say the truth? They're not gonna have a vote. So for the first time, finally, a progressive said it, you know, they're not even, we're not even gonna vote on Medicare for all. Forget winning. So look, she, the media in their infinite corruption and establishment bias are outraged by comments she says that are the most obvious things in the world. I mean, most the majority of the Democratic leadership says no to Medicare for all, no to Green New Deal, no to getting corruption out of politics. Mm -hmm. They say it's not corruption, what do you mean? When I take corporate money, it's not corruption at all. So they don't agree with any of our policies, but yet the mainstream media goes, I don't see a division, there's no division. No, no, they're progressives, they're progressives. No, they're the left party. No, they're not. They're just the Democratic leadership is not remotely left. They're the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. So that's obvious, that's obvious, that's a minimum you can say, right? Now the reality is AOC and others should say more. Who's blocking those votes? Mm. Is Are the Republicans in charge of the House? I don't think they are, right? I know that the media will attack you. I know they've attacked me uh, when I say it's Nancy Pelosi who's blocking the vote. Now that's a fact, that's a fact, but apparently it makes people uncomfortable. And you wouldn't wanna be impolite in Washington. So even when AOC says things that are just, in my opinion, really soft and obvious. What is what was the media reaction? I can't believe she's saying that, Oh come on. So all right, well then I wonder what they would have said about MLK, actually I know. But let me read you quotes from MLK. 
since she mentioned MLK and we're so close to it. He said, this is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or taking the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now's the time to make the real, make real the promises of democracy. Now the New York Times and all the media and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer say, let's take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. I mean, my God, what do you want to change now? No, we're not gonna vote on it now. And it'll hopefully Bernie won't win and we won't vote on it next term or ever. No, just take a nice little tranquilizing drug of gradualism. I'm not, look, ask them, hey, Pelosi, I know I'm the rude one. Schumer, Hoyer, any of you, when are you going to vote on it? Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, King said, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. And last one, he said, there are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? He went on to say, no, no, we are not satisfied. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. If he was around now, Democratic leadership would attack him. And they would say, how dare you? How dare you? We're gonna do it later. We're gonna do it later. You want the fierce urgency of now? What an unreasonable progressive. What do you want us to be leftists? And then imagine, and then what else did Martin Luther King do? He fought against the Vietnam War, against war? No, no, we vote with the Republicans on war. What do you wanna see, what are you talking about? Income inequality, leftists, socialists. Can you believe that he wanted to help people who were suffering poverty? What a leftist Martin Luther King is. And he wants immediate action? When is he ever gonna be satisfied? You think they wouldn't have said that? I guarantee you they would have said that. And everyone watching knows that. TYT is all about challenging and disrupting the status quo, and so is Aspiration. Aspiration does not invest your money into fossil fuel businesses that harm our planet, such as pipelines and oil drilling. Instead, you'll be able to fight climate change with tools like AIM, the Aspiration Impact Measurement, and Planet Protection. They also don't hit you with outrageous fees for you to access your own money. You can even earn cash back and get free ATM uses up to five times a month. Head to aspiration.com slash TYT to learn more. For a limited time, get 30 days of free TYT membership when you sign up.